memory of husband. Miriam, who's was your memory of? Was it in memory of? In memory of husband Bill. memory Jim. Job for you. You've got to take care of the candles. Got to take care of You're not doing too well. Yeah. 
Good morning, Gary. Here, I'll help you. Good morning, Gary. Hey, Gary. Are you back to the hole, huh? Are you back to being whole? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you in the name of our Lord, those present, those joining, worshiping by live stream, and we give you thanks uh, for your presence here to hear God's word and to share in God's supper. Let us stand and sing our opening hymn, For All the Saints, number 422. Note we will sing the verses uh, listed there. Um, as we remember the saints for which you have lit candles, the saints for which you uh, have on your memories today is remember those who've gone before us. Number 422. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, Lamb who was slain. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant to us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We take time in this worship service to name the saints that have been baptized into Christ or died in Christ in the past year. So I direct you to your insert, your white insert, as we remember these people. God of salvation, we remember those baptized into Christ in the last year. Today we name and light candles for Asher Pauly, Bryson Peterson, Eleanor Johnson, Luella Blumgren, Joaquin Guadalupe, Paxton Genegus, Kingston Rodriguez, Renly Menson, Daxton Trickle. Guide them, loving God, on the path of faith. And surround them with the care of your people, the church. Amen. God of the resurrection, we remember those who have finished their work on earth in the last year. We grieve their passing and honor their legacy. In memory of these departed saints, we light candles for Lois Sands, Bruce Bakke,
Freeman Hoppy, David Miller, Donald Mackey, Shirley Hughesby, Lois Thompson, Gary Miller, Dennis Hunstead, David Rainey, Stanley Asklin, Valerie Raway, Lester Reckle, Keith Winkleman, Grateful for their lives among us and the blessings they were to us. We give thanks for them and praise their Creator and Redeemer. For the times they gave faithful witness, we follow their example. May the good they shared live on. And may we remember them with peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Note for next year, don't reuse the former tea lights. Um, if, you do, if you don't mind, I hope it's not a distraction, but while the scripture lessons are being read, I'm going to relight some of these, if that's all right. So don't pay any attention to me. Listen to the reading of scripture.
The first reading is from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second reading is from John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Pentecost first. Okay, so we got busy lighting candles, and I've lost my readings. Thank you. The Holy Gospel is from St. Matthew, chapter 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and, lay, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before, before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, saints of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ, who is risen from the dead. Amen. Brian is bald. That one 
detail about him may not seem all that important to us, but it is an important detail to his kids. One night, Brian and his wife went out for dinner, and so they'd asked a teenage girl to come and babysit their two small kids in their home. Well, as it happens, the babysitter got distracted and did not keep a close eye on the kids every moment that evening. When Brian and his wife returned home, they quickly learned their little boy, Peter, found his dad's electric shaver. Yeah, you're already laughing. Peter shaved a big strip right down the middle of his head. Well, you can guess what happened next. Brian, in his sternest voice, said, Peter, I have told you not to play with my electric shaver. I have also told you that you would be punished if you ever did play with this shaver. Well, Peter seemed rather oblivious to what his dad had just said to him. Rather than looking sad and remorseful, he seemed to be delighted when he responded, when he said to his dad, wait until you see my sister. <laughs> At that, of course, Peter's mom and dad ran to their daughter's bedroom, and there she was. All her hair shaved off her head. Now Brian was furious because his son had not listened to him, but mostly Brian was upset because he did not want his kids playing with things that could injure them. So just about the time Brian was about to dole out the punishment he thought was deserved, Peter looked at his dad with tears in his eyes and he said, Dad, we were just trying to look like you. Well, you can imagine there was no punishment that night. Instead, both Peter and his little sister heard again why they were not to play with things like electric shavers, and they each got a hug, a big hug. That little story about Peter who wanted to look like his dad is a great story to go along with, to go along with the message that you heard a few moments ago from 1 John chapter 3. In particular, it's only, it's only like three verses long, it's a short reading, but in particular that first verse, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. It's only one verse. It's even part of that first verse. But it's a pretty powerful message. And we're going to unpack that message in three phrases. So the first phrase, see what love the Father has given us. See what love the Father has given us. You and me. The Greek word for love in this phrase is agape. This isn't just some warm, fuzzy, feel-good kind of love. It's awesome love. Love that rolls up its sleeves and serves, gets to work. It's love that has no limit. It's love that is beyond our wildest dreams, our wildest imaginations. This agape love that God has for us was perfectly expressed in Jesus, the Son of God, the one closest to the very heart of God. 
in Jesus, you and I see the perfect, perfect love of God, love that suffered for us, love that could never be extinguished, not even on a cross. This love, this perfect love of God raises you and me to a new way of living. This love of God raises you and me to new life and eternal life. So that first phrase, see what love the Father has given us, leads to the second phrase, that we, we should be called children of God. That we, you and I, should be called children of God. Now, in order to unpack this phrase, or at least to attempt to unpack it, I'd like you to take a look at the front cover of your order of service today. You see there the names of the saints, names that we heard not long ago, those who have died and gone before us. You also see the names of those babies that have been baptized. Beautiful, sweet babies. Yet as beautiful and sweet as they are, all those who've been baptized, they share our human condition that isn't always so beautiful and so sweet. They share our human condition that we are children of a fallen humanity, that we're sinners. And they, like all who are baptized in the water and word of holy baptism, they, like all who are baptized, are reborn children of God. Through the water and the word of holy baptism, God works God works and transforms us. God works and makes us new. God works and names us and claims us as God's very own children. It really is quite astonishing, to say the least. There's just one more phrase in, in that first part of uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Just one more phrase for us to think about and to soak up. I'm going to back up, though, and go through the first two again. Maybe say it so often that you'll have it memorized. If you don't already, that you'll have this verse memorized by the time you leave today. So the first phrase, see what love the Father has given us, leads to the second phrase that we should be called children of God. And that leads to that third phrase. It's a declaration. And that is, that is what we are. Notice that there isn't, there isn't any maybe about it. Nor does it say that you have the potential to become a child of God. It doesn't say that one day you'll become a child of God. Instead, this verse, this part of 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, this part, this phrase, is a present tense declaration. It is reality right now. And this declaration holds within it all of the great promises and gifts of God, like God's unending love and forgiveness and eternal life, this declaration also holds within it a reason for being in this world. So I want you to think back to the story that I started out with this morning, that story about young Peter who wanted to look like his dad. As children of God, you and I were created 
to look like God. To bear God's image in this world. Now there's another part of 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 that talks about the world does not know us because the world did not know God. The world did not know Jesus. And so the world, the world that's broken by sin, the world does not know us as children of God because it's a counter-cultural way of living. It's a counter-cultural way of living, living as a child of God. You know, the world says, the, the voices of the world, the powers of this world tell us that you should be number one. But Jesus says, the first will be last and the last will be first. The, the voices of this world, the powers of this world, tell us, be sure to take care of yourself and worry about everybody else later. But Jesus calls us to serve others. The voices of this world, the powers of this world, tell us to have an abundant life. Meaning, to get all that you can get for yourself. All the money, all the stuff, all the toys, get it all for yourself. Just amass it all. But Jesus says, an abundant life means being in relationship with him. It's a counter-cultural way of life, living as a child of God. And the world that's broken by sin will not recognize us. But that's our work in this world. That's our purpose. Our greatest purpose in life, in fact, is to reflect God's love through our words and through our actions so that, so that others will see God, experience God, so that others will come to know God and worship God. That's our greatest purpose in life. Living in this world. Now I need to be reminded often of that reality of the good news that I am a child of God. I need to, I need to be re reminded of that often, and my hunch is that you do as well. So here's what I'd like you to do. Some of you have been asking, what am I supposed to do with this name tag? Here it is. I'd like you to take that name tag, and if you didn't get one, raise your hand right now, wave, and the ushers will bring you one. If you didn't get one, I'd like you to take the name tag. Now, if you stuck it on, you already put it on, that's okay. That's just fine. Peel it off, off of your clothing, or off of that paper back. Take that name tag and a pen if you have one, and if you see your neighbor doesn't have one, then share it with them when you're done with it. I'd like you to, of course, write your name on it. Now, I, I took one of these. I like this. Hello, my name is... We didn't have enough for everybody. That's okay. But write your name on it. And then, I want you to write some more. I want you to also write Child of God. Write your name, first name, last name, if you want, middle name, that's okay. Write your name, and then also write Child of God. And then, Put it back on or put it on for the first time. I want you to wear it today. Please. You can wear it today. You can wear it tomorrow. 
You can wear it every day until it's worn out if you want. Wouldn't that be great? I want you to wear it. It's a reminder for yourself and it's a sign of your identity in this world. Imagine, for just a moment, imagine what this old world would look like if we were known by others, not only by our first name and our middle name and our last name, but also as child of God. Imagine. Imagine what this old world would be like if everything we said and everything we did flowed out of that identity. Imagine how this world would be renewed. So there's a lot of saints that could be included. Of course, there are many stories right here in this place. But I want to tell you the story about Agatha. Agatha, she's 80 years old, maybe even older than that by now, but when I read her story, It said that every morning she gets up at 5 to cook. Every morning at 5, she gets up to cook. She prepares the food each day for the Meals on Wheels volunteers to take to homebound people. And then she also cooks and feeds anyone who comes to her door, and she charges just enough to break even for that meal. And a lot of people have asked Agatha why at her age, at 80 and even older perhaps, why she doesn't just sit down and rest. She says, I want to be a, 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 I want to be a person who is a friend to all. I want to be a person who is a friend to all. I can serve my Lord by helping other people. I'm going to rest in heaven. Well, Agatha is a child of God, one of the saints. That's the life that she's called to live. It's the life that you and I are to live as well, out of gratitude for all that God has done and continues to do for us. You and I, children of God, the saints of this day and age are called to live a life that reflects God's love in all that we say and in all that we do. That's the life that God calls and empowers us to live. See what love the Father has given us. That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to join in singing our hymn, number 669, from the red hymnal, Rise Up, O Saints of God.
Let us join together confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, page 104. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Each petition ends, God of grace, your responses hear our prayer. Holy God, the church triumphant gathers around your throne to praise you. We join them in praising you and naming you as our Savior, gracious and faithful to all. God of grace. God of hope, in the complexities of war, may the hope of peace and reconciliation not be lost. Direct leaders to rise above the desires for revenge and harm, that they may find the way of peace. We name the war in Israel, the war in Ukraine, the war in Sudan, and the struggles of Somalia and Myanmar. God of grace. Advocate for good, as Election Day comes this week, we pray that good and capable people will be elected for the sake of both the people they serve and the office that they uh, sit in. Guide our nation in virtues that make a nation good and healthy. God of grace. Jesus, we are joined to you in baptism, and you place on us the identity of being children of God. Dress us to be your saints in life. Guide us to live lives listening to your guidance, to love, to care, to be generous, and in all things to find then the joy you desire we have. God of grace. God of healing, grant wholeness to those who are sick, healing or recuperating. Today we name Kathy, Linda, Rhonda, Jean, Vern, Sandy, Tom, Laverne, Marion, Ken, Monica, Marilyn, Don, Jennifer, Aaron, Laura, Susan, Phyllis, Amber, Sonia, Cindy, Hannah, Larry, Chris, Ruth, Dan, Mark, Diane, Bev, Bailey, Mark, Ariel, John. And we do give thanks also for Jody and Don as they come off our prayer list for the healing they've received. God of grace. Holy healer, bless the brokenhearted and all who mourn. Today we give thanks for your victory over death and the promise of life eternal. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant it to us, Lord, for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated at this time.
I'd like to highlight a couple of announcements from our bulletin. Thank you to Chuck, Kathy, and Eric Noren to, for sponsoring today's radio broadcast in memory of loved ones. And a happy birthday, or a couple days ago now, uh, on November 2nd, uh, to Betty Winshell. Is Betty here this morning? I don't know. No. Okay. But uh, you see in the announcement, uh, if you want, I can send a card. There's an address there. The next two Sundays, we'll be having what we call a table talk as part of our stewardship uh, program this year. We'll be going up to the social hall. You just need to come to one of them. Uh, so you can pick which Sunday you go, uh, but we sure would appreciate your attendance at that and your participation. I'm teaching a class both after worship today, the same class on Thursday, uh, just addressing some of the root causes of the conflict we have now in Israel and with the Palestinians. And uh, you're welcome to come uh, today or on Thursday or both. The difference in the Thursday class is I'll have a little more time to cover some more material, uh, but uh, I'm also hoping to live, not live stream, to Zoom the Thursday class so you could watch our Facebook page uh, to see if that becomes a reality <laughs> and, and the link to do that. You'll see a nice insert uh, summarizing the uh, financial side of the fall bazaar and see that uh, it was... Uh, well attended and, and did quite well financially. I'll leave uh, the rest of the announcements to your reading and uh, want to thank you for the way that you give offerings, whether it be at the door here or electronically. And for those offerings, uh, we give thanks to God also. So let us stand and sing. Let the vineyards be fruitful, number 182. Our gracious God, these offerings show forth your blessings to us and our desire to bless others with the work that we do in Jesus' name. May we be faithful and may others come to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the witness of the saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race that is set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with the saints in glory. And so, with all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our table is ready. For those visiting with us today, we want you to know you're invited also. We believe that Jesus has a real presence in this bread and wine, and you're invited to receive. We'll be communing by station today, meaning that because the rail has candles on it, you'll just come and receive the bread from one of the pastors, the wine from assistants, and then, and then uh, put, go back to your seats. Uh, we do have uh, gluten-free and grape juice. Just ask the server if you would prefer that. And if you can't come forward, please tell the usher so that they can direct us back to you. Please sing also as we commune. You'll see the hymn numbers uh, there in the bulletin. Come for the meal is ready.
Please stand as you're able as we conclude. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And in your mercy, you have strengthened us through this gift for faith in you and in love toward one another. Lord, as this table of grace is extended to others through these communion kits, we pray also for those who will receive your, your uh, Lord's meal uh, later today and will join with us in praise of you and receiving of your nurture. In Jesus Christ, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing our closing song, verses 1, 3, and 4 of 424. Go in peace and serve the Lord.